Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this session called Abusing Ever Active Directory. Who would you like to be today? And hopefully, the microphone is, uh, you can hear me clearly. So, first, of course, I would like to take a chance to thank our sponsors who made this possible. So, here, here they are. Thank you very much. And there's me. So my name is Dr. Nestor Sunima. I'm MVP uh, for Identity and Access, and I'm a creator of AAD Internals Toolkit. And you can follow me on Twitter. You can you can use the handle Dr. Azure AD. You can find me from there. Great. So let's move forward. So. What are we going to talk about today? So first, some introduction and background information about security of the cloud. Uh, and then I'm going to show you three different ways that you can attack cloud environment via on-prem environment. So that's pretty much the content for today. So let's start. So here is a couple of references and credits for other guys on whose work my, my own work is based on. So please read those documents and link, click, click those links. And then a couple of words about AAD internals, which I'm using today. So that's a powerful module. That's a hacking and admin toolkit for Azure AD and Microsoft 365. It's an open source. It's it's in powerful gallery, so it's easy to install and easy to use. And then some introduction and background before before showing you those attack methods so uh, quite a lot uh, people are, have asked me that is the cloud safe or not and i could say that yes cloud is safe so it's very well protected it's uh, so basically you can go you can walk into the data center micro data center and let's say steal some something out there that's just impossible. They are very well protected. So basically, only way an attacker can attack or get get into your organization is is that that attacker have the credentials. So uh, the attacker has to steal them somehow, or use phishing, or then something like uh, password spray attacks, so that he could he or she could be penetrated environment. So I could say that, but how? Safe cloud is now. That's a good question. In practice, uh, there are no pure, let's say, cloud-only organizations. So, if you are even little bigger than just a small or mean or very small organization, you have typically something in your on-prem environment. You have Active Directory where your users are. You you might have like something like single sign-on so that your users can log in to cloud with the same credentials that they are using in on-prem environment. So when you are enabling or doing these kind of things, you are actually poking holes to that secure cloud environment. So for attackers, it's much easier to penetrate your on-prem environment nowadays. And when they get there, they can use known vulnerabilities or feeds uh, of certain cloud services so that they can they can um, uh, impersonate users, they can steal credentials and so on, which I'm actually showing you today. So we could say that cloud is as safe as your on-prem environment is. So to keep your cloud, you need to keep your on-prem environment also safe. Okay, so a couple of words about uh, Azure AD Connect, which is uh, uh, tool to to uh, use to synchronize things. So, so what it basically does, it it, it will synchronize things from your on-prem environment to your cloud, as ID. So it synchronizes things like users and contacts, groups, devices, and password hashes if you want to, which actually is a preferred way to to do now nowadays, according to Microsoft. But besides that, it is also used to configure authentication methods. So that's very important to remember that that is a tool that you are used to do that. Okay. So 
then a couple of words about solar gate or sunburst. Uh, so what is it? So it's a backdoor which was added to SolarWinds Orion uh, network monitoring software. <clears throat> so they were able to penetrate the supply chain. So, so they inserted a backdoor in electric go code. So it was signed with the, with the certificates and that way it was uh, spread it to at least 18,000 customers or something like that. That's the estimate. And uh, with that backdoor, the, the attackers were able to penetrate organizations' on-prem environments. And from there, they were able to laterally move to, to uh, that infrastructure that was connected to cloud. And via those, they were able to penetrate those customers' cloud environment also. And that's what I'm going to show you today. Okay. And this is our demo environment I'm using today. So I have like uh, three different environments, one for password authentication or PDA, one for seamless single sign-on or SSSO, and then one for Fason or ADFS. So, so these are demos and this is an interactive show. So demos are interactive, meaning that I will, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you uh, to attend also these demos by signing in when, when I'm asking ask you to do that. Okay. So that was the background information. So now I'm going to walk through these different three different methods to penetrate the cloud from the on-prem environment. And by the way, if you have any questions, please uh, you can put them on chat. So I'm 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 trying to answer them after the session if uh, if, if we if we have time for that. So let's start with password authentication. Now, what is password authentication? So basically the purpose of password authentication or PTA is to allow users to use the same credentials in cloud that they are using on-prem. So that's it. That's the whole purpose of that. And how uh, technically this is uh, done. So when you are using PTA, you are using authentication agent. So authentication is done through PTA agent. And that's a piece of software that is installed in a domain joined uh, server. And the agent is connecting to Azure AD. So there's a service bus queue. And what that queue is, it is uh, talking to Azure AD and vice versa. Azure AD is kind of talking to that. So when you configuring PTA, what is actually happening? Well, first, the authentication agent is, is installed, and it can be installed in any in any domain joint server. But when you are first configuring this using Azure AD Connect, the first agent is installed in Azure AD Connect server. And um, after that, that is installed, uh, the Azure AD Connect creates a certificate, which has the public and private key. And since uh, or after that certificate is created, that certificate kind of represents that agent. And then Azure AD Connect registers that agent to uh, Azure AD. And while doing that, it also sends the public key of that certificate to the cloud so that um, they can encrypt those authentication requests. But well, we will get back to that in a minute. And after that, all that is done, it just simply starts the service. And then the agent connects to cloud and, and starts listening for any authentication requests. Yes. So how the actual authentication flow flows. So first user enters credentials to Azure AD or, or Office 365 uh, login screen. And Azure AD then encrypts those credentials using uh, PTA agent's public key. And then it creates an authentication request and adds that request to the queue. And PTA agent is listening that queue. And whenever there's some authentication request, it will test that. And then using its uh, private key, it will decrypt that, those credentials. And then we'll uh, pass those credentials to login user W uh, method or function, if you will. And that way it tries to log in as that user. And whatever results comes from that login user W function, uh, those results are sent back to the queue. 
and then Azure AD will see that uh, result, and based on that, it will grant or deny access for that user. So that's pretty much. So the weak point here is, oh, sorry, one wrong window. The weak point here is this. So that's the kind of point where we can we can do things that that uh, are not so good. Let's put it that way. So what we need to exploit. So basically, we need to make our own version of that login user W function. And uh, the implementation I'm using with AAD internals is such that it will uh, say that everybody is that everybody or all passwords are correct. So even though you type wrong password, you you will still get in because uh, I'm returning that okay, these were correct correct credentials. And also my implementation saves all the passwords, username and password entered to a, a log file. So you can actually harvest credentials. Uh, and um, you could use those credentials in other services also, not just in here, because uh, users quite typically use pretty much not if not the same very similar passwords in other services so let's start our first demo then I'm gonna switch to my demo environment here so here we are and we are on a as already connect server of organization called adatum and uh, i'm going to show you how how to install this uh, PTA spy, which is doing what I just explained. So it will let everybody in and, and harvest those credentials. Okay. So first, I'm just going to show you that uh, uh, I'm not able to sign in using, let's say, one letter password. So it says, no, you can't do that. But when I enter the correct password, I can I can log in like this. Um, now I'm just gonna look out like this. So uh, now what I'm going to do is that I'm done the PTA spy. So I'm gonna say import module AAD internals, which I have already installed here. And I think it was already imported also. So now what I'm gonna say is that install AAD in spy like this and yes I'm sure about this now it's installed so I'm just gonna uh, open the process hacker here to show you that uh, it is actually installed so it's a browse down here and here we have a service called Azure AD connect authentication agent service and when we double click that and go to modules and hit P for PTS by we can see that it is actually injected here. So here is, oh, sorry. Here is our uh, agent, uh, sorry. The PDS by is installed in or, or injected this running process. So uh, what I'm now gonna do is to start a, a uh, little script here, which basically uses get AAD in PTS by log with the switch decode passwords, which will show those passwords what user has used while logging in. So I'm just gonna start that one. And while doing that, I, I would like to ask you now to join me to this demo and log in with these two users. Uh, you can do uh, which user you want to. and Log in using any password you want to, and we will see those passwords. So please don't use your own passwords. You can say hello to other other attendees. So, uh, for instance, if I want to sign in as Megan now, I can say any password. So this is any password. I'm going to show you back to you. Yes, and I can sign in. And we will see that shortly here. And after you have signed in, you can also go to Teams and you can uh, leave your 
leave your message to other attendees here if you want to. So just, hey, hello, greetings from Finland or something like that. Like here. Yes, so that was the, and here we have the first, first commercial actually, yes. Yes, so uh, this kind of shows that if you are not protecting your Azure AD Connect server correctly, uh, the the local admin can do this. So you don't have to have any other admin rights, just local admin rights, so that you can install that particular uh, PTS by. And that's it. Great. So how to uh, detect that someone is using uh, PTS by? Well, you can look for a folder if, if that exists. So in uh, root of C drive, there there is a hidden directory called PTS by. So show that to you. So when we go here and to C drive, so we can't see anything because that's hidden. So let's, so hidden items, I can still see it because the system file, so I'll just go and it's fine. Like this, and now we can see that there's ELL which was injected and then there's a lock file here. Okay, so that's one way to get that. And other, other is, uh, is uh, that you can kind of see if someone is installing the Pausel module AAD internal so, or any other if you want to. So you need to turn on Powerful module logging for, for all modules or just for AAD internals. And when you see this kind of event in Powercell operation log or 401, 4101, yes, uh, then then you, you can see that whether packets called AAD internals was installed. And, and if it is, you know that someone is uh, doing something in your computer. Okay, so let's move forward. So next one is Siemens single sign-on. And what's the purpose of Siemens single sign-on? Well, if the uh, purpose of PTA was that you are able to use your uh, same credentials in, in on-prem, uh, sorry, same credentials in cloud that you are using in on-prem, Siemens single sign-on's purpose is to, to provide single sign-on. Well, as the name suggests. So whenever the computer is uh, connected in, in domain and it's in corporate network, it can do the single sign-on to cloud using Kerberos, which is a use, uh, widely used in, in Microsoft environment. So some concepts which are related to, to this uh, Kerberos authentication. So basically, uh, we have three parties here. So we have user who wants to use or consume some service. Then we have the service provider, and then we have identity provider. And now the service provider doesn't trust anybody except that identity provider. And similarly, you as a user, you only trust the identity provider. So how you can consume that service, and that's where the Kerberos kicks in. So kind of you have a two trust relationships, but if you want to use that service, you need to prove uh, to that service provider that you are who you are and you are allowed to use that service. So this is where the Kerberos kicks in. So basically how this goes is that the user will uh, send a request to the identity provider, which in this case is domain controller, and says that, hey, this is who I am. And, and that request is signed, or sorry, encrypted with that user's password. And now domain controller knows everybody's password, so it can uh, verify the identity of the user by decrypting that uh, uh, that request. And if the decryption is okay, the domain controller knows that the user is who the user uh, claims to be. And then the user says, okay, I want to use this particular service. And then the domain controller will create a service ticket and will send that back to user. And with that ticket, user can go to service, and then the service provider can verify that that request or the ticket, because uh, the ticket was uh, was um, encrypted using that server service password, password password of that service. So the password, sorry, the service knows its own password, so it can verify 
the request by decrypting that that ticket and seeing what whether that's okay. So this is how how the Kerberos kind of works. So user provides service ticket to service provider who verifies that, and if everything is okay, the user can consume the service. And here's the same in in more formal, let's say, flow. But I already explained that, so just move forward. So what happens when you when you configure this uh, seamless single sign-on using Azure AD Connect? So first, it enables this in Azure AD. So we, there's kind of a switch there in Azure AD that says that okay, this organization is using using seamless single sign-on. It also creates a computer account called by default it's called Azure AD SSO ACC. And then it also creates a service principal name and and sets this uh, URL that this is uh, kind of connected to to that already a as already SSO account. And then it configures the uh, service using that computer's name, account name, and password. And yes, the actual password is sent to Azure AD so that um, the Azure AD can actually verify those those Kerberos tickets with its password. So here's a short process description how this works for browsers. So let's assume that your organization is using seamless single sign-on, user signs in or tries to sign in, uh, enters username, and then Azure AD uh, detects that okay, now this organization is actually using seamless single sign-on. So I'm going to ask you to go to autologon.microsoft.azuread-sso.com. So browser will get redirected to that uh, address. And then autologon sends a negotiation challenge that, hey, you need to authenticate, you are not authenticated. And then the browser goes to domain controller and says, I want to authenticate to this autologon, blah, blah, blah. And then the domain controller will create a ticket for you and then the browser goes back to autologon and autologon kind of returns a authentication code and with that code the browser goes back to Azure AD and gives the code and then it, it is uh, uh, locked in so that's how it goes and what the uh, how does this actual Kerberos ticket or token looks like so it's this like this and um, so so here's the, the most important part is that blue one, which is uh, PAC or, or privilege account certificate, which which is uh, signed with uh, checksum, which is calculated using the server secret. So that's one thing the Azure AD is actually using to verify the user. So the uh, what Azure AD actually checks is that is the server checksum valid? In the password that was sent to Azure AD when this was configured. And also it verifies that the timestamps are valid. And the most important part is that is there a user in Azure AD that has a matching seat that, that is included in this particular uh, ticket. So what do you need to exploit this? Okay, of course you need to uh, have the seamless single sign enabled. So you don't actually have to use that. You just need to be enable that. You need to, of course, configure the seamless single sign, but you don't have to use that. And then you need to know the password or uh, MD4 hash will do fine of that computer account. And then you need to know the seat or security identifier of, of that target user. So let's see how this works in action so now i'm gonna go to uh, another uh, uh, demo environment and this organization is called wood group or wood grow and let's start by going to domain controller and i'm just going to show you that uh, here in computers we have that as ready sso ACC, and if I start Pubbosel and say set SPN, and I'm going to ask for anything that starts with autologon, we can see that 
we have the same same name here. So whenever a user is going to any of these addresses, so this is what is basically used, then then the Windows environment knows that, okay, I'm going to need that particular computer account to, to create that, or that account's password to create that service ticket. Yes. So uh, let's assume that we have been able to create these um, organizations as already connect server. And I'm going to say, who am I? And we can see that um, I'm not locked into the to domain. So if I go to here and say same thing, that, oh, OK. So who am I? I can see that we are locked into Bootgrove domain as AAD internals user. But when we are here, we are locked into this computer. So I'm just a local admin. So what we need is a password or password has for that computer account. But how can I get the account because I'm not locked into a domain? So, and uh, I would need to have a little, let's say, uh, more privileged uh, credentials. But luckily, because we are now in, in Azure AD Connect uh, server, we can dump the credentials that Azure AD Connect is using and use those to access the domain. Okay, so, First step is that I'm gonna get those credentials for for the user the Azure AD Connect is using, and of course I'm using uh, AD internals here. Import module AAD internals like this, and nowadays the virus software are checking that more. Oh, carefully, so it takes some time sometimes. But I can say now uh, get AAD in sync pixels, and I'm gonna select AD user. And here are the credentials the Azure AD Connect is using to to access your domain. So just gonna say here now that grid equals get credential. And I'm just going to copy these here. So let's see if that works. Yes. And then the password. Now, this is a very long password, as you can see. So that would be quite hard to remember. And then I click OK. So now we have the credentials we, um, we need to access domain. But now, how can we get the password of that computer account? So for that purpose, I'm, I'm using uh, uh, DS internals, Puzzle module. Uh, created by Michael Grafneter. And there's a particular uh, uh, command let called get ad ripple account. And what this does is that it, it kind of emits uh, domain controller replication. And I'm just going to ask for one particular user for that computer account and get all the information about that account using using this this command here. So let's see the screen I have here. I'm, so I'm just quickly going to walk through with you what we are doing here. So uh, first, we are going to use direct user services uh, for finding that particular user. So uh, as, as we can see here, we are uh, trying to find a, a computer account, which is called Azure AD SSO ACC. And then we are going to say that find one. Uh, and the purpose here is that we are going to get the uh, GUI or the global unique ID of this, this particular computer account. And when we have that, we are going to say that, OK, I want to get the account information with, with this GUI, with this credential for this domain. And then we, we, when we got that uh, user object, or sorry, computer account object, we can get the MD4 hash of that password from there. And with those, we can then uh, search the directory for users and their seats. So that's what, what I'm going to do now. So I'm just going to hit this button here. It will run the script. So it will get the uh, actual 
password has of that computer and it will also list all the users and their seats what we need to access access that uh, our cloud environment so here are the users and their seats so what i'm going to do now is that i'm going to import module i haven't done that it internals to this session now we have that and i'm going to save uh, this Kerberos ticket to a variable and now I can say new AAD in Kerberos ticket. I'm going to say seat string. So if we want to be, let's say, uh, well, anybody here, like, let's say, where's Megan? There's Megan. Is that Megan? Yes. So we'll just going to copy that. I'm going to pass that variable. Then we're going to say the password has equals that md4 just gonna turn the camera off this here and then <clears throat> we're gonna say the domain or we don't need that actually yet so now i'll just hit to enter and now we have the ticket saved that, that variable and now with that we can get access tokens which are used in, in internally in Azure AD and Microsoft 365. So let's save that to a variable also. And I'm going to say get AAD in access token for EXO, which stands for Exchange Online. I'm going to say uh, Kerberos ticket equals KT. And then domain would be would grow dot office 365 labs dot online. Like this and now if everything went well there's no error so yes let's see what's inside that so we aad in access token like so <clears throat> and now if we zoom in a bit we can see that the user is at that make and there's a lot of let's say access right to that user's mailbox so for instance if i now would want to Set email as that user, that would be very easy. So I could say send AD int Outlook message, give that access token, and give some recipient here and, and, and subject and message. And, and if I want to, I, I could save it, send the items and so on. So, so this way it would be quite easy. If you only have access to, to uh, dom uh, sorry, AAD Connect server, you have local admin rights, then you are able to uh, dump those credentials that as already connected is using, and then with those credentials you can access the domain controller to retrieve passwords. Password has this for any user if you want. And with that information, if we just have that password for the MD4 hash, actually, and you know those user seats, you can take them, go back home, and you can create those tickets from there. So so you really need to protect your Azure AD Connect servers very well. And all, well, luckily, the, uh, you can, you can uh, still use MFA, for instance. So, so even though you are able to create a ticket, uh, but if you, the user is forced to use MFA, you really can't log in as this user. So, so that's one way to protect that. OK. So. Uh, how to detect so uh, you can turn on again that power source logging but in practice it's very very hard to detect so yeah okay let's move to the last one here which is iteration and what this does well basically this this does the uh, same things that the previous two did so first, it enables for users to use their on-prem credentials in cloud. I also provide a single sign-on with the computers which are locked onto the domain and are inside the corporate network. But but this time we are using Windows integrated authentication and and not Kerberos. Well, actually, internally they are they are using Kerberos. But we here we have also three parties. So we have the user, 
who wants to consume services, we have IP provider, and then we have the service provider. And the process here is pretty much similar to Kerberos thing, except that now we are using SAML or, or security asset markup language, which is an industry standard way for user federation. So here, the user goes to uh, what is called ADFS or Azure, uh, sorry, Active Directory Federation Services. So that's a, uh, actually a uh, built-in feed so in 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 uh, uh, Windows servers. So you can just enable that. So so user goes to there and and logs in, and if everything is fine, the server creates a SAML token, which includes some information about the user, and then it's signed with a uh, server certificate. And the public key of that certificate is also inserted in in that SAML token, and then it's sent to then user sends that to service provider, and um, which in this case is Azure AD, and then Azure AD verifies using the public key that the thing that is really, really uh, fine. So it's a legit, legit uh, authentication. And if everything is okay, it, it, it will let let the user in. Yes, so uh, when you are configuring this using Azure AD Connect, uh, you can do it also without Azure AD Connect, but this is the process uh, when you are using that. So Azure AD Connect creates a, a, a new, ADFS farm, it creates token signing and token encryption certificates. And uh, they are stored in a configuration database and they are encrypted. So the certificate, certificates are not stored in, in normal, let's say certificate stores, but they are in, in database and they are encrypted. And the encryption key is saved in Azure, sorry, AD. So, so you need to, you need to have rights to access as uh, active directory the certain uh, container there to be able to fetch those uh, keys to be able to decrypt those certificates yes and uh, there are two different authentication flows the first one is let's say normal way to do this so so that the service provider initiated which means that you go to uh, azure ad you give your credentials, and then then the Azure AD recognizes, okay, this is a federated domain, so it redirects you to identity provider, which is defined for or configured for that domain. And then the uh, identity provider creates that SAML token and sends that back to user, and user goes then to, to Azure AD and, and logs in. But there's also another way, which is called identity provider initiated where you can just skip those two first steps. So you can just go to identity provider and say that you want to, uh, I, I want SAML token for this service and then it will just create and send that to you and you are good to go. Okay, so what is inside SAML token? So it has audience, which is a service provider. In this case, it's uh, login.microsoftonline.com. Uh, then we have issuer, which means that who issued that particular token. And in this case, it is your own ADFS server. And then there are some attributes related to user, like uh, user principal name, immutable ID, and there can be like groups or pretty much all kind of stuff. And then there's a signature, but also the, the public key of the certificate that was used to create that signature. So what does Azure AD uh, check when it receives the SAML token? So first it, it uh, looks that the issuer matches the federated domain, some federated, well, some federated domain in that uh, tenant. And also the public key has to match that federated domain. So in Azure AD, all the domains that are federated have this public key information, so it has to match. It also checks that the signature is valid, and that there's a user with matching immutable ID, ID in, <clears throat> in, in that tenant. So how to exploit? Pretty much same again as with uh, that uh, seamless single sign-on. So there has to be uh, one federated domain. So it can be any domain. You can log in as any user in that tenant regardless of the domain as long as there's one federated domain. And then you need to know the private key of, of the certificate, 
configured for that particular domain. Then you need the issuer URL, and then you need to know the immutable ID. So let's see how this works. So our last demo then, and we go to this Contoso organization, and we go to here, custom domain names, just to show you that we actually have uh, three domains here. One is verified, all are verified, but one is uh, federated, and that's this one. And I've configured this uh, domain to use the ADFS in this particular server. And now what we need, first was the certificate. So I'm going to get that one. So I'm going to start by importing the module. And just going to say export AAD in, in signing certificate and do that. Oh, let's actually go to this desktop so that we can see that and do that again. So now we have the certificate. And next, what we need is um, those immutable IDs. And now, because in this computer I'm logged in as a domain admin, uh, I can I can list those users. So let's say get ID user, select user principal name, and object GUID is what we need. Oh, and field star. So <clears throat> here we don't have that many users, but uh, if we want to log in as this user, we need to convert this one to immutable D. So let's do that. So let's click two more. So first we need to convert that to GUID object. And then we need to get a byte array out of that. Then we are going to convert that to base 64. Uh, to base 64 string like this. And if we run that, we will get the that one there. Okay, so that's the first thing we need. Now we have the certificate, and then we need to know, know that is your URI or URL. And for that, I'm going to say get ADFS properties, select identifier. And select. That's easier. So now we have all the information we need. So uh, let's say open AAD in Office 365 portal, and I'm going to say the immutable ID equals this one here. And then we need the issuer, what's this one here? And then we need the PFX fine name, which was ADF signing certificate. Yes. So what this command does, it creates an HTML file, which has a SAML token in it, and it opens in in the browser. And when I click the button here, it sends that to Azure AD. And because we have configured everything correctly, it the user is able to log in as that user. So. It's just as easy as that. OK, so we are almost running out of time, but uh, there's still one thing I would like to show you. Um, so if the user is able to get, get domain admin rights, uh, it can uh, persist, create a more persistent, let's say, backdoor. So we have one domain here registered called backdoor.my0365 site and if I get an access token access token for AAD graph and I'm going to use a credential which I'm already saved here so I'm using uh, dom uh, global admin rights here so I get that one and I can say that convert to AAD in backdoor and I'm going to give that access token and then the domain name which was backdoor.myo365.site and hit enter. Are you sure? Yes. So now what it did was that it it converted that domain to federated. It added a certificate of, of AAD internals there. 
and then it set the issuer here. So, but that's not so easy to remember. So I'm, so I'm gonna say, I'm gonna change that to other. So MSL service and using those credentials. So I'm just gonna say set MSL domain. Iteration settings, uh, domain name, backdoor, IO365 website. I'm gonna say, is the URL, URI would be HTTP and SS 2021. That's easy to remember. Okay, now I have a browser window, another browser window here. Uh, this is in my own computer, as you can see, I'm not anyway near that domain. So there's a, a service, backdoor.aadinternals.com. And if I go there, uh, this, this can be used to those tokens as logged in as a user also. So I'm going to enter the URI here. We need immutable ID. Well, there's a, there's a cloud user which has an immutable ID of A. I set that manually. I now create token here. And you can also, if you want to, there's a team site where you can give your credentials. So here we see that here's the issuer here, here's the, the immutable ID, and here we have here we have signature and the, the certificate information. And now when I click OK, uh, sorry, into Office 365, it goes there, and then you type in uh, MFA code sent to me by via SMS, so this is not very good, I can't do that. But luckily in, in uh, ADFS, there's a thing that you can bypass multi-factor authentication. So I just now click generate token. And when we go back here, we can see that it inserted a, a claim that kind of says to Azure AD that don't do MFA, I already did that. So that's for, for that kind of purpose. And then I click log into Office 365, I'm able to log in. So I bypassed MFA. Yes. So how to detect that one? There's a lot of things you can do. Well, there's the uh, powerful module logging, and then you can uh, turn on auditing for directory service access. So basically, uh, when user is trying to access this place where the, the uh, uh, key for for which it was used to encrypt that the certificate is stored, then there was all there will always be a item in, in security log uh, 4662. And if you look that and you see any other user that that the uh, service ADFS service then then you should raise an alert that something bad is going on there. And also uh, you can see as audit logs for any modifications. That should always be a very alarming thing. And then in Azure uh, AD signing logs, you can see that if users uh, MFA requirement was satisfied by claiming token. So that's one one bad thing to look at. So how to mitigate? So here are what you can do if if your organization is compromised. So you can rotate ADFS token signing certificate twice. KRV, TGT account password twice, and also Azure AD SSO account computer account password twice. So that's how, how you can kind of get rid of all those uh, backdoors if others have uh, made, made those. But how to prevent? Well, only way to prevent is that you need to treat all uh, servers like uh, Azure AD Connect or servers with PTA agent or ADFS servers as a T0 server. So you need to protect those as well as you protect uh, domain controllers. And of course, use the principle of least privilege. So, so that, that's, that is what you can do. And basically, this is the summary of that, that you, there's three different backdoors you can use and uh, what, they, what you can do with different methods. And with that, thank you for, for watching. So yeah, now I'm gonna, see those questions what we have so 
when Azure is act active on the accounts, you can't abuse or hack the accounts, right? Yes, that's correct for the credentials you you have uh, uh, gathered for uh, using PTA. That's correct. Uh, and or if you get those um, the password of Azure AD uh, SSO account, that's that's also can be pre prevented with with MFA. But if you are if you will get access to that. Uh, Token signing certificate you can bypass MFA. And doesn't Michael say not to rotate the ADSSO account more than once in 30 days due to other issues? Uh, I think they do, but this is for if you have breeds, so you need to you need to mitigate that situation. So that that kind of a pros against cons uh, are much greater, so you really should do that. Is there any known security issues with path, password has synchronization? Not that I know of. So as far as I know, that's very secure because those hashes are synced. Uh, if you get the MD4 hash, it is um, uh, hashed thousand times. So you will calculate uh, eight Mac with uh, 256 uh, bits long uh, key, and you do that a thousand times, so so you really can't really reverse engineer that easily. Okay, just type in your questions if you have more. What method would be the most secure in your opinion? ADFS, PT, hashing, and so on. Uh, now, now that is that is a good question. If you have protected your ADFS uh, well, I, I would go for that. Just because uh, in, in that way you can choose your own authentication method, so you can do pretty much anything you, you like to. Uh, Having said that, that it's also a kind of single point of failure. So if ADFS server is not well able to log in. Uh, and then another next one would be has synchronization because that's the only method actually that you can you can use if you connect it from your on-prem environment. So if your network goes down, that's the only way you can still use from outside your organization. Great, I think we are almost running out of time. So again, for watching and then thanks for great questions. And join the rest of the conference.